Murray straight out from him, even though he goes down. Murray to Malk on the bottom. Oh, that's a nice wave. He didn't quite have enough leverage. Maybe that low boom hurt him there to be able to not get under that lip so much. An interesting study in contrast. And upwind of him is Itapasishi. And he kind of got shut down. He got the he got the crumbs of that exchange. Well, what a flurry there, Kai. That was a flurry. What a flurry. I got to say, from watching it, uh, got to appreciate Pascal Hardy's aggressiveness in that. I mean, he did go down on the last hit, but in terms of the aggressiveness of the riding, he was right there at the lip. I would use the word tenacious. And he did not quit on that ride, even though it might have been a situation for him where he thought he was outrunning it and it was running fat on him and... And all the things that go through your mind when you're trying to just display your style at its maximum efficiency. Well, Pascal stuck with it. And I hear groans from the crowd. What happened to somebody? Oh, this is really, I mean, like, us fans of water sports here, you're going to take a look at down at lanes in an in-between moment and, and your guy's spinning air surfing. So just keeping the keeping the pipe on. But a scoring Chase. opportunity for Mouch right now yeah, riding take it on away. the Severn sail. Really uh, finding the, the best possible spot to be in for, for this wave. It's only a, a Green Treves uh, point wave sort of wave here. You know, solid off the bottom. Got some buckets going out the top. Real foamy now on the end section here. And uh, a little late for the aggressive last turn. Kind of goes down in the white water there, but yeah, Mal, you know, definitely is not. What I really like is he hasn't he hasn't gone into any other mode other than attack the whole time, and that's what I come to expect of the guy. So it's no surprise to me. But what you are seeing is that some people might change up their game a little bit to conform to the conditions or the or the flow of the heat, so to speak. Not Moritz Mount, not by a long shot. And here's Itabisishi, and this. This guy is just waiting to do something major here. I've seen it in the free sailing. I know what he's capable of. Beautiful bottom turn on that taboo board. Really he, tight. Really tight. And uh, maybe the wave didn't offer exactly what he felt it was capable of offering, but he still has a chance to kind of do that. Wow. I didn't know he had the goiter in the Oh, I saw there. him make a perfect one yesterday. He's right. got the full bag, and I think he's kind of the guy in that whole Team Japan crew who's capable of making the most noise. I don't want to put him that far ahead because that whole crew, they're a bunch of gnarly shredders in there. Yeah, look at the replay that we just got. He looks like he got hung up before he did the rotation there. Yeah. He had kind of a nice setup and then almost looks like he gets backwinded and doesn't get quite around. It was contest mode. Yeah, well, he knew he wanted it and he only had that one spot to do it. That's kind of the, the bugaboo of contest sailing. You know, yeah. you don't necessarily get to pick your spots. You kind of no. got to go with what's given to you. Well, On the outside now, Pascal Hardy. Pascal Hardy, listening to your advice, get, getting what's given to him. He's far from out of this situation now, almost just finding his groove here. The fade line, I like the left fade line. His board hung him up a little bit there. He might be a little juiced, but Pascal is a strong Canadian. And he knows how to hit lips like that. Perfect timing. Hardy really putting it together on that ride. An impressive one. And out in the channel he goes. Well played. Well, out got, of danger. You got to like the way that one set up for Pascal Hardy. It was, uh, it, it, he kind of started off slow. The, the waves walls up. And then by the time that he was ready to turn it down the line, bang, off the lip. Pascal Hardy, nice yeah. progression. Look at that. Projection for Pascal A host of good riders coming up here as we look at Itaba Sishi. Sishi hey, or here. Sashi? Hmm. Here, move your thumb. Itabi Sashi. Off the bottom. I like to say that a lot too much. I won't say it for a while. Punching his bottom turn and doing the full boom grab. You see the wide boom grip off his bottom turn. On the outside, Tries nice the set lining up for Mouch on the Severn sail. Oh. All the way up at Green Trees. Got a lot of room to play with. Good bottom turn. Got about a minute and a half left in this heat. Great this bottom turn combo here. He's really got the slashy top turn, Jays. Yeah, and here he's looking for the, the aerial section. You see the waves kind of splits there and coming up for the big top turn, but... What a legend if he makes this. Yeah, he might be able to pull the sail out of this. He's got a shot. He's going to pull it off. He's going to be on the rocks if he's not careful. Got oh, it. Oh, and he's got it. 
You know, Judges that, take note with the does. save. It does. You know, when when you go down, it's a difference in score between being able to pull it out. Even if all you get is to be able to continue the wave, it does make a difference in the judge's eyes. So uh, good job there for Mouch. Absolutely. It's got to be less than a minute in the heat now. Sales are full powered. It's it's a minute left here. This is a crunch time moment here, mostly for Itabashi. So you're watching the Aloha Classic 2018, the IWT International Windsurfing Tour. This is the first round men's division. Itabisashi. Versus Pascal Hardy and Mouch. Three-man heats. Best to advance. You're calling it a dingle. You call it the dingle, uh, and the, the winner of the heat goes to round three. That being the, the primary difference. 30 seconds. Here goes Itabashi. Great looking wave, actually. He's got some scoring potential here if he reads it correctly. Nice cut back, but a little bit too much hot sauce. Ooh, you can just feel the way that one stings when there's a good opportunity. But, you know, it did kind of fizzle away there. The, the wave really turned into a bit of a white watery burger. So uh, maybe not quite as good as it was looking right at the start. But with less than 30 seconds, you know, that is the last of the opportunity for that heat. So we're going to move along into heat number seven of the 2018 Aloha Classic, Kami Huban, Hashimoto, and Aguera. Yeah. Huban, Hashimoto, and Aguera. Heat number seven of the 2018 Aloha Classic. I'm looking forward to CJ here, who's been playing it really smart in his warm-ups. Not pushing too hard, but doing what he needs to do to stay ready. Uh, you know, one of our top team riders here at Simmer Style, Kami Huban needs no introduction. Having won a Hokipa event before, that was the uh, Maui Wave Challenge 2011. So okay. do we know if this is uh, Alex or Greg Aguera? It's Greg Aguera. Greg, all right. So 16-minute heat, two-minute transition. I'm here with Kai Kachadorian. This is the 2018 Aloha Classic. And uh, Greg Aguera, one of the uh, preeminent uh, sailors of all time here at Hokipa, and making his rounds through the pro men division. Indeed. Going to be a tough heat. Kamihu Ban, always a solid competitor here at Hokipa. I don't know too much about Hashimoto. Hashimoto, just uh, another one of those respected members of Team Japan. I believe he's an RRD rider, if I'm not mistaken. So what it is, is uh, equipment-wise, is Greg Aguera's on Sailworks, Kamihu Ban's on Simmer Style, and Hashimoto's an RRD guy. And so no jump has been added. What do you think about the possibilities of uh, maybe the wind kicking up to, to the point where the judges add a jump? If it was smaller, I would justify it. I think the size of the waves puts us in a situation where you would need to ride a slalom board to be able to do it. And we don't want to see anybody wave ride with a slalom board. No, we don't want that. But I do find myself just kind of yearning for, for a jump score. Maybe we'll get it sometime during the competition this, uh, the next couple of days. You know, back in the day, Jason, when we had three contests a year here at Okipa, it was always the spring event that had the jumping. The fall event was very rarely involved in it, and that's because the trades tend to switch a little bit more east. And we're going to see that today. It's going to play out a little bit later in the day where we're going to actually start seeing it southeast, and that's going to continue tomorrow, and that's certainly not a jumping direction. So as much as I agree, I'd love to see the jumping. I don't think it's going to happen. How do you like the southeast direction for the wave riding, though? Southeast direction for the wave riding is going to increase the level of apparent wind and it is also going to clean the waves even more. It's a plus both ways. We like clean waves and we like apparent winds. So hopefully we get uh, conditions that allow our competitors to really push the limits of windsurfing and show us some of the aerial maneuvers that, you know, that's possible on the wave right now. I mean, no question. I'm looking forward to seeing some of that. This is a, this is a great canvas for Greg Aguera here. Greg from Kuau Maui by way of Florida. And he is going to definitely go to town here. Greg's not going to back down whatsoever, except he's going to play it smart, too. Well, that's where the wave kind of folds in half. That's, you know, from, from swimming hooky, but that's where I sit. I line up with one of the uh, yeah. telephone poles there. And that's, that's really, there's kind of two different waves. You have the, the upper green trees wave, and then you have the point wave. And they really split right there in that spot. And uh, the current kind of runs out. And you have a good opportunity for, for an aerial section there sometimes, but a lot of times you get a closeout. So a lot of times you get a closeout. And then after the closeout, you end up in a worse spot. These, these situations play out over time, but, you know, the, the seasoned competitors know 
You know when to hold them, know when to run, and when to walk away. It's, it's a hard thing to do, though, when you're in the competition mode and you really want to get a score and you're, you're looking at it. It's a hard thing to do to, to, to kick out the back and, and play for later on in the heat. Certainly an easier thing to do earlier in the heat chase. But definitely still hard. And, I mean, we talk about the mentality of what's the difference between how you sail in a heat versus how you normally sail in free sailing and why there's a, such a difference with certain sailors. Uh, and it's it comes down to the mental game of competition itself. And if you get drawn into competing against who you're competing against, that's one thing. But really to look at it philosophically, you're only competing against yourself. Right, right. Well, and it's certain things, certain traits that I, I realize about the competitors out there. I mean, Alex Aguera, I mean, Greg, excuse me, Greg or Alex for that matter, both of them. One thing that I know about both of them is that they're phenomenal uh, in their wave knowledge and, and which waves that they're going to catch and, and their and their overall knowledge of Pokipa. So uh, it's not surprising to me that Greg has you know, started off this heat with one of the first waves of the heat. And I expect him to, you know, to really be on point with with wave choice, which is a hard thing right now when you when you look at the conditions out there the wind has really changed in the last couple of minutes it went from being pretty full-on windy to kind of a, a a lull through the contest area right now it is switching more offshore and as it's switching what we also see very very clearly is that it's forcing riders further up and that situation will play out both in favor and against depending on what wave you select now kamiju bond as we watch Hashimoto just racing on the inside, looking fairly out of control there. And Kamiju Bon with a full head of steam, fully powered on a nugget bomb. What a slash for Shuban. Here he comes. He's going to punch his bottom turn, kind of a check bottom turn, because he's got a sectionist coming up. He's not backing down, but he does a kick out arrow, which is a very good move of self preservation. Greg Aguera behind him is off to the races. However, as he's off to the races, Kamiju Bond's going to take this one on the head. Oh, bad spot for me. Unfortunate. And Hashimoto is most likely going to go on the rocks. He is really looking like it's a bad situation for him. Now, Juban, I think, would have done the aerial, but I think he was under full power there. Overpower. Over power. Yeah, well, the angle wasn't very good for Kami right there. I mean, he might have been able to, to turn that one and get back in front of the wave, but uh, yeah. he, I think he saw an opportunity to get away from it. Oh, here comes the rock. Hashimoto dance. just doing pinball, but doing the right thing and swimming. We're looking at Kami Juban's rig on the outside, which is just cruising on its own. Hashimoto is fighting tooth and nail. He just did it. He just peeled himself off the rocks, Chase, by not giving up. Yeah, well, you can't give up right there. You have to swim for everything that you have to get around that kind of the, the headstone right there. And if you don't get around there, you are going on in the worst kind of way. So, that is the worst spot. Yeah, well, he managed a couple extra strokes, a little bit of grit, and you are pretty much in the clear. Unless you have a big set, you are going to make your way out from, from that part of Hokipa right there. So Fact. good job for uh, Hashimoto making his way around the rocks and, Let's see how much time we have left oh, in the heat. 11 yeah. minutes, 30 seconds left in our heat. 11.30 left. Uh, I'm looking at the situation just in terms of the scoring. Uh, kind of a bit of a warm-up situation for Juban there where you kind of got a half a wave ride. But he has now reached. He's got his rig back. Or is that a yeah, Kamiz all the way up? Excuse me. He's out of the Gara's rig down low. And uh, let's launch the drone and see what we can get here. And... Uh, Kami is so fast to get back in position. Yes. It's just amazing. Uh, part of it is how light he is, but it's also he's just so efficient and and has an amazing way of being able to position himself in the lineup. Look, here he is all the way back up at Green Trees. Right uh, there. Maybe not the wave that he wants to go on. He's just having a little sniff at it. But, down front. You know, it's for him to be there as opposed to be down in the, you know, in the penalty box with everybody else. Uh it really gives, it allows you to sail from a position of power. Down in front. Kamiju Bond definitely taking his small quattro board to town there, really piecing it on the, kind of almost looking like, you know, the, the power band. It's just windy on the outside, and then it gets lighter on the inside, and you get this in-between mode where, oh, it's just, 
It, why why is it so much more tiring to sail fluky wind than it is when it's fully cranking? Well, you know? that's just an angle thing, right? Right, yeah. right now, the, this is all an angle thing. The wind hasn't really increased or decreased, but it's just a, a slightly more offshore angle, and things start getting blocked by the trees and the cars and the and the world. Yeah, and the world. Yeah, and so here we are. The competition, it's, it's really hard on the inside, and you have to be choosy. You have to kick out when the wave isn't providing. And in a way, you have to play yourself away from the inside. The reality is that you don't need to be there. You're going to put yourself there because you, you're trying to, you know... Trying to get a good score. Trying to get a good score. Yeah. Honestly, you know, it, it, we, it's so easy to talk about this up here. Well, Jace, you and I have sailed plenty of heats between us. We have, but, you know, I, I, I find myself getting into this scenario when I'm just free sailing out here, too, where you're coming into the inside where... Why are you there? Right. You know, and I, I find myself asking myself that all the time. What are you doing on the inside? Kick out earlier and, you know, put yourself into a position where you you can be the upwind guy, you know? Right. I mean, sure, it's beautiful to be out there with, with four other competitors. That's a real blessing. But, you know, the, the scenario is the same. You have to be the upwind guy. You have to be able to be the guy to be in position to get the sets, Absolutely. whether it's four guys or 40 guys. So here we are looking on the outside, Kimi Hibon setting up for a little bit of a score. Not a big wave, but, you know, this has definitely got a wall to it. Nice big bucket off the first turn looking for an aerial section. There it is. Good projection aerial. And if you want to see the live score, you could go to ridescoremobile.com. That's where the uh, live broadcast is. Yes, ridescoremobile.com for it's your live scores. A Gara, really cool whitewater rebound there. Uh, Juban tore up a, a smaller kind of a scoring wave, shall I say. Not necessarily the wave that's going to score more the way he wrote it. A Gara's definitely still, you know, he's making contact on whatever he can. A Gara needs a set in order and to... A Gara needs a set. That's the fundamental difference here. And what I'm noticing is the guys on the sets are juiced. They are powered up. So, you know, that's, gonna, that's a good little observation to make just in terms of, you know, if you're going out there soon. And, oh, yeah, Hashimoto there. Already got one good turn on it. Yeah, he's looking real good. This is a nice wave. It's not a bomb, but it's a good, clean wave that's going to roll all the way through. If he reads this right, he's going to put himself right in contention. These are the money turns here. Nice bottom turn cut back for Hashimoto. This is one of the better ridden waves of the heat until the kick out there. Now, Juban has position, and the time is, we got 6.30, so essentially close to, you know, over halfway through. Hashimoto might have left a little bit of meat on that bone right there. You know, there was a, a bit of more of a section that he could have done more with at the end, perhaps. Correct, you know? correct. And when you have a wave that really opens up like that, it's, uh, it's a shame. You know, your, your best two waves are scoring, so when you have one that really lines up like that, you really want that last hit to... Uh, it looked like he got top. hung up. We're talking about big levels of apparent wind. It's a heck of a combination because you, you don't want to find yourself underpowered so you can't make it out, but you don't want to be overpowered on the wave. Now, if they were counting jumps, Jace, back to the jumping, you'd be rigging and you would see guys brutally overpowered on the outside. Yeah, well, no it, was, it, it wouldn't look good on the wave. If you were forcing people to get a jump here, they would be altering things Well, what it would be, it would be that crappy forward on the outside that the judges miss half the time anyway. Yeah, well, that's we did away with that about 20 years ago, and wave sailing is better off for it, at least at Hukipa. Another Nothing against jumping. Hashimoto in a bit of a pickle on his way out. He's got a set. He had to run down of that. Now Greg Aguera's on the inside. This is channel drama like I was claiming. It's just close call, but not quite. There's not enough west in the swell for it to truly be a threatening situation in that. But here's Kamiju Juban. And I am saying it right now, this is one of those ones where he's going to be able to open up the full can salvo. Buddy, you saw that little frustration pump? That was him saying, Pita! Yeah, he might not think that he needs it either, though. You know, we are early in the competition. This is the first round. Uh, I would venture to say that he's already got a pretty good couple scores in there. And, uh, you know, somewhere down the line in the contest, you really might need that spot. You might need to hit that lip. But, you know, maybe not. Right he was now. pretty close to hitting it, Jace. It was one of those ones where he was going to go, but he knew that there was a chance that there was going to be a pretty severe price to pay for it. 
So maybe not. Right. Yeah, and no, and it, that's what is, I'm saying. Round two, you probably hit that spot no matter what. You know, I was talking to Camille yesterday uh, out in the lineup as he was warming up, and I was just complimenting him on sailing at you know 75 percent, dialing his game back, and just not going f- for two reasons: equipment and your body. You want to be able to have those two things completely intact in this situation. All the warming up in the world is not going to help you if you hurt yourself or tweak your gear or, or break your favorite board. Break your favorite board. It's yeah. interesting to hear you talking about how much you love your gear. I mean, when, when you get dialed in on something and you're ready to compete against the very best in the world, losing your best board on the rocks is not something that you want to do. That is far from plan A. We've got a bit of a lull here. Four minutes left in this heat. This is round one of the 2018 Aloha Classic. We've got Kami Huban, Hashimoto, and Greg Aguera. It's a good battle, and uh, Kami might be kind of having his pick of the sets here, but this is a multiple wave set here coming in, starting up at the green tree. These are the ones I really like. Hashimoto outside of Kami Juban, and Kami Juban right here opening up the salvo. There he is, slashing. That's what I'm talking about. Juban Airlines getting back into the picture here. A double whammy on the hit. That was gorgeous riding. Hashimoto behind him kind of did the scaredy cat hit there didn't want to get completely under it wasn't in position to do anything but get pieced by it had he tried Hashimoto not done though floats the lip gets down unfortunately this wave is going to unload on Juban's head but he's smart enough to duck dive under it Juban had a really nice ride Jace yeah we're really going to have to give uh, Juban credit for that one those were two very late spots for those uh, aerial hits that he had Uh, very very difficult spot to to get the projection from the lip to get back and in the front. placement. Yeah. Placement's really important, and the thing about Camille is he's not a really big guy, so he's able to ride small boards. I'd say the same thing about Sarah Hauser, and that you can ride small. If you're if you are able to ride small boards, the simple truth is you are able to put that small board in different positions, more critical positions. Another person I'm going to use is a perfect example of that is one of my favorite sailors. That's Tomas Traversa, yeah, well. who can ride tiny gear super effectively and just rope these turns under the lip i've seen traversa go upside down under the lip at punta preta and make it look routine they're smaller guys that sail really big i mean Camille huban is not a big fellow but when he sails he really looks like he's got a lot of power through everything that he does so we got two minutes left in this heat and a bit of a lull kai bit of a lull Where where does it stand right now as, as you see it I'm not looking at the live scoring right now, but I think Juban's got a pretty good hold on it. I mean, I've seen other people ride waves well. I think Juban's got this fairly in control based mostly on that last wave. I think had he not had that last wave, this would be a little bit more in question, though not entirely. It would just be less of a less of a lead. Well, only having one really good score under your belt leaves you open, right? But then once Camille, you know, fills up that scorecard with two solid, solid waves, now he's a, a hard guy to beat. What do you think about the overall uh, kind of impressions of the contest thus far? Any Anybody that's stuck out to you so far? I, I can think of several. I thought Robbie had a really good heat. Um, I think Camille's actually just getting started here on this heat because he's on a really good nugget right now. Uh, Camille just really has his kit together. Quattro boards, simmer style sails. He's got... A lot of style. You can see how this high boom really affords him the leverage because this is going sky high, guys. This is an aerial this is spot. A big skying aerial. Two aerials, why don't we? Nicely done, Kami. And uh, that's going to definitely put the stamp. We are under a minute to go. Well, you gotta you got to love when the the wave lines up like that because the riding really allowed him to, to maximize that wave from the first aerial that just projected him out in front clean landing allows for that second really late aerial yeah and then uh you know because he was in rhythm there through the two hits he's able to get that final section so good 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 wave from Kimi Hubon. there goes the horn but i will add just that he finally found a wave that was going to really allow him to do that a lot of these other waves he had that one little late opportunity didn't quite you know open it up for him or he didn't feel confident enough to try it that was just automatic you knew it was going to be big uh, it's nice to see how much projection that he gets when he's really lined up and the timing's working out. Camille, when he hits that lip, it's just bang, right back into the flats. And and so much 
uh, ability to be able to connect from one hit to the next. So you see how much leverage he has. Look at this. He can really put his weight down. I mean, that's the out the back first thing there. But here's the body of work here. Here's a high line. You know, you just see that he's coming through with a lot of speed. This is a buzzer beater Hashimoto attempt. I don't think he really truly believes it counts. That exchange is over. This heat's done. We're in the transition right and now. We're okay. in the transition. I did hear the horn. All right. So you're watching the 2018 Aloha Classic. Oh, no. Good conditions here at Hokiba. I would go as far as to say that it is close to epic today. Winter is here. Winter it's is not here. Even winter is coming. Winter is here. Well, summer is over, man. Yep. And Kami just decided that he decided wanted to just donate his rig there right at the end of this thing. Makes you cringe a little bit. Well, to, makes to me see. cringe because I lent him a mast. Oh, perfect. And here it is about to get detonated. Let's hopefully that, you know, just go for it. Your gear can handle it. Mantra of Simmer Style holds true here. And it looks like it's in one piece. Camille looks like he's fairly tired. I would be too if I did that much swimming. I mean, he really didn't need to have any of that happen. It was, the heat was over. This was all done and dusted. Well, that might also just be a natural windsurfer reaction of you see a lip and you want to hit it. What do they say about, you know, construction workers? You see lots of nails, you know, when you're a construction worker, you see opportunities for tools, right? And when you're a windsurfer and you see a lip, you see the opportunity to hit it. And sometimes it doesn't go quite right. And he didn't need to do it. And here Kami is swimming for his gears life right now. But uh, his rig's broken. Um, not sure if that's my master or not, and I just hope he's okay, and we'll take it from there. I'm the team captain. I have gear for my team riders. That's how it's going to work. Now, that was the horn, if I was not mistaken. Start of the heat. Start of the heat. Mauricio, Lee, and De Rosa, and that is Jing Lee right there. Yeah. So kind of, you know, you see these guys who are, you know, in these heats, might not always sail Hokipa. I always see uh, I always see Leah Kanaha more than anywhere. He's a really good freestyle sailor, but he's out here on occasion and certainly has the wave game down and starts his salvo with a fairly decent score right off the bat. <laughs> it is what it is, Jace. You know, the gear is part of this equation of performance. Gotta and choose the right stuff. Gotta choose it. And you've got to you've got to understand that being in tune with your gear is paramount to being able to perform at the highest level. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not an afterthought. And the guys who are in tune with their gear are obviously also confident. Do you know and who you can that see was? with Daniel De, Ro De Russa there, uh, went down hard. And that wasn't confident sailing. That was like throwing it a little bit into question the whole time. Yeah, wanted the aerial, maybe wasn't quite in the right spot for it. And uh, when you land like that and your front hand blows off, nothing good comes from it. No. On the outside with the Goya rig, this is... Lee. Lee coming down the line. That was a good first turn for Lee. Going to make some points off that. Looking to get around the section here. Might have gone and uh, kind of outrun the wave. Hoping for something at the end bowl section. Yeah, there's carnage starting to happen here. Uh, Kimi's picking up the pieces of his rig. Uh, Daniel, he's pretty much on the rocks, guaranteed here. That's brutal. Oh, man. And out the outside on the uh, JP rig, that's got to be uh, Mauricio. Mauricio, Frederico Mauricio, who's been uh, a fairly strong presence on the tour here. De La Russa's done. He's on. That's not how you want to start your heat ever. Okay, Frederico Mauricio has Hukipa to himself, guys. And there's no finer place to be for him. Let's see if he can capitalize on this advantage. He has selected a small insider in comparison to what else is out there. But he's going to take his, he's going to take a two way here. He's going to take advantage of being the only guy in the lineup. And as he kind of does his little slash turn combo there, he heads for the channel, but not before giving it one last little hit there. You gotta watch out for that last hit because it puts you right in front of the rocks. Now Daniel DeRosa has just sailed off the rocks, broken batten and all. That's steely determination from the Italian. I think he's Italian. I don't know, Kai. I hate it when you're out there and you're all to yourself <sighs> and for whatever reason, maybe it's nerves or or just not quite enough patience to 
you have the pick of the litter right there. You could choose yeah. any wave. And, and Mauricio did not need to choose that wave. I don't really necessarily see a ton of other waves coming through, but the reality is that <laughs> there's certainly the chance to be in position, which he has, to his credit, retained upwind position. Which is, which is a good victory there, you know, because he got to win. have the score and then yeah. still in the spot. But I was more kind of mentioning with, you know, with my own sailing where, you know, there are these times where you're coming in on a wave and you know you should kick out. You know yeah. that it's just not the right one. And Truly. contests, they really, they bring that out more than anything where if you're only being scored on two waves, you better choose the right two. Yep. Wave selection and this whole ideal of choosing your two best wave rides has totally changed the game. It's allowed people to ride different kinds of rig combinations. You're not seeing the old school World Cup mentality slalom boarding at Hukipa. We used to, you know, like the World Tour final, the whole entire tour would come here and jumps would count and, and titles were on the line and guys were literally riding slalom type boards just so they could jump and sacrificing their wave riding for it. You and this is also just when, when, when transitions counted, okay? So, like, we're really harking back to an old era there. But the point is, as of around, I would say, the 2007 Cabo Verde event, when Cowley showed up with that twin fin and started redefining the way waves could be ridden, and not just normal waves, but really world-class shreddable waves, that started the multi-fin movement. We went from twin fins to quads to tri-fins, and really, you know, a lot has changed since then, but the, the mentality of a heat of this magnitude here, two waves count, and that means that you need to focus on riding the best waves as aggressively as possible. Take it away with Mauricio, Jace. Riding on the JP and uh, Neil Pride tail. Mauricio is setting up all the way at Green Trees here. Waiting for the wave to line up. You can see it feathering down the line. Here he comes, setting his bottom turn, looking for the aerial, but just a bit of a burger at the top there and kind of going over the handlebars. Yeah, that, that, was, a, that was a burger with no meat and just a bunch of cheese. You've got to be thankful, though. There's nothing behind it. That's the worst when you when you hit that burgery section and then you look up and the next one's even bigger. <laughs> All of a sudden, you pay for it. Right. <laughs> it's like, oh, God. Oh. Well, Del... De La Rosa, you know, De Rosa, excuse me. De Rosa is back in the game after sailing off the rocks, but he's got a broken head batten. And you can see that thing flapping like a flag in the wind. Interesting how important some of these little things are, like a head batten. It makes or breaks you. It's going to be hard for him to really sail, but he's on another wave. Let's see what he has. Let's see how that S2 Maui sail, which was a four bat and is now a three batten. De Rosa gets his combo together and heads to the point and gets under the lip and does a skying aerial. Almost makes it. Oh, A for effort, De Rosa there. A for there. effort. Got to give it to him. And Lee is kind of running away from a good one and heading for the channel. You really have to respect the aggressiveness there from De Rosa. That was a Big very time. late hit, and that was a very committed hit. It was. It was. Full commitment there. Jace, another big set coming into lanes. This means only one thing, and that is a big set is going to be coming to H Poco Point. That's eight foot lanes. All right, so for the for the viewer out here and people who are trying to figure it out, why are we seeing it break at lanes first today and then the set coming into Hokipa? Well, you, this particular set uh, really started at lanes. It's possibly a little bit of a westerly component to the swell direction, but Lee Run just put himself life. in the middle of it. And he's done his chicken jive out of trouble. But anybody who's in De Rosa's position really doesn't want to be there because this wave broke top to bottom right in front of the rocks. He's trying to water start. And now, well, he's, he's okay. He's far enough away from the rocks that it really didn't punish him. Jay Lee, however, is in no man's land. He might have just checked in for his reservation at Mama's Fish House for lunch. That actually sounds pretty good, Jace. Well, yeah, it would be great to have Mama's Fish House for lunch. Hey, if you see me in my heat, like heading down there, just meet me there, all right? I'll just put in an order for you early. Yeah. Oh, De Rosa is on the absolute worst part of the rocks. Not good. 
two rock trips in one heat. He is on the lower part of it, and I don't think you can see it on the camera, so I won't yap too hard about it. I'm going to talk about Federico Mauricio and a little bit of redemption here on a nuggeting who keep away. This is a really good one. It's not too big. It's not going to challenge him to run away from it. It's going to offer him a chance to carve smoothly. He is running from it a little bit, but this is going to be a good score for him. Federico's been trying really hard to break into the pro ranks. Followed the IWT tour very closely, and that's an ugly-looking wipeout. From just simply trying to stick that turn a little bit extra. And I don't know what we think, like how we want to see that extra little skippy cutback thing. But that was unnecessary, and he definitely paid dearly for that. That's too bad, too, because that was the Goldilocks of waves. That was, like, not too big, not too small, just right for the conditions today. You could see the way the wave was opening up all the think way about, down. Yeah, think about how this heat started. He had he'll keep it to himself. He had he'll keep it to himself, and he basically fumbled that position away into now who keep us got he will keep us got hit Mauricio to itself <laughs> I'm looking at the live scoring right now it looks like uh Danielle de Rosa is in first place with a 5.87 and a 1.17 and Mauricio is in second with a 2.67 and a really low second score of 0.4 so so de Rosa full credit given for those hits and the judges are rewarding him for it Jace Absolutely, and we're going to uh, let Mr. Rob Funk take over for a second. Thank you, Jace Panabianco. We welcome back the infamous Rob Funk and his Dodger hat, which is going to soon be blown away by the wind. <laughs> we don't really want that hat here. I'll put it down here. But so De Rosa, his heat might be over in terms of his participation in it, but he's winning it. And for Drico Mauricio, there is an issue. He's talking to the jet ski driver. There's a conversation here that might have to do with broken gear or something else. It looks like to me that his rig is intact. I don't quite understand what the yelling is about. Is he injured? There's a lot of drama here right now. And I'll tell you, we'll keep a place for keeps in these situations. And right now is no exception because we've seen some guys really throwing it caution to the wind, if you will. Super interesting to note that no jet ski assistance allowed. You are your own savior out there. Wow, now that's an interesting show of sportsmanship there. In that De Rosa handed Mauricio his rig. I'm very happy to see that level of sportsmanship in this competition. De Rosa's on the rocks. He knows it. That's why DK wasn't picking him up because he was like, you got to go out on your own. I can't help you. I would think that DK might be able to take him to the beach, but maybe not. <coughs> Brutal. One of the more interesting exchanges here at the 2018 Aloha Classic IWT Finals. And really what, what, it, what this is, yeah, this is a competition with people competing against each other. Make no mistake about it. You're competing against the elements even more. And the elements have seized control. Are winning. Or are winning. <laughs> In this seat, I would say the elements are winning. We have broken gear, broken egos, and nobody in the lineup. The only people in the lineup are people warming up for the next heat. That's Morgan Naro. Yeah. Yep, the conditions, the uh, nature always wins. And this is a case in point. Morgan just wishes he could ride that wave. Uh, Duncan would have definitely not appreciated it. <laughs> no. Uh, I, you, know, you know, a couple of the gnarlier race directors, Duncan pales in comparison to Alex Aguera. No kidding. Who was super gnarly and would keep you here well beyond, you know, reasonable sailing conditions in an effort to force things through. But he also would not listen to people complaining about, I can't water start on the inside. And I'm, Duncan has been that way as well. Uh, but the gnarliest one, I have to give it to Ed Angulo, who was just super ruthless and had no guy. He would fine you if you needed to be fined for sailing in the judges' area, no question. 
Ed, Ed did not mess around. Alex really didn't mess around either, but Alex had more of a, of a, I would say, you know, he didn't vex his authority, vest his authority as much as Ed did. And there, is, there has been many. I really like the way Alex and Ed ran contests, though, and they put the priority ahead of everything else was get this done. Let's not get into the politics of who's happy and who's not because it does not matter. What did I always say, Rob? Fair is a four-letter word. It sure is, but I will say one thing about Big Al Aguera, that he and Greg ran contests like you don't even know. They were just, oh, you do know you're involved, but my point is I worked for them, and they were so spot on all the time. I think we have a, a star guest here on the couch. We're going to bring Bant Rodinger down. He's ready to come down. And uh, we're going to see kind of a new look with Bant, who's gotten rid of the hair. We and uh, we're coming down to the last uh, under two minutes of this Perfect. heat, so we'll let you guys take over. I'm going to sit out and let Bant come in. All right. Thanks, bro. Kai. Okay. <laughs> Kai. Go live. Good to see you, Bant. That really is you. You. It's me. It's him. It's it the is samurai. With, it is me. You know, looking a little <laughs> bit more like the Dalai Lama, but you know it's all good. <laughs> oh Man, yeah, well sailed heat and uh, that uh, taco or goiter that was very sail wet. And you just pumped that thing around. The sails going around the falls and bloop, bloop, and you're in. Yeah, very that, impressive. That the one 360 mm. was really the score. <laughs> yeah, scorching performance. Yeah, thanks. Well, um, it's really nice. Uh, I guess with the round one format to. Uh, to have that ability to just let loose, kind of do whatever you want. Yeah. Second and third place is obviously a penalty because you get, you have to go to round two, yeah. but you're not eliminated entirely. So. Um, Did you feel it put less pressure on you right away? Yeah, I I, I just felt like it promoted um, better sailing in me, because I sort of felt like okay, well you don't really have to think about strategy. You can just think about what you're doing on the wave. So yeah, I really, I, I really like that that format for sure. Tell me about the board you're riding. Uh, okay, so I've got two boards, which two boards, really nice, a quiver basically. Um, <laughs> I've got a quad and I've got a thruster. That heat, I was out on a thruster, um, and I've got two Black Project uh, surf fins, like medium-sized surf fins, uh, as the thrusters, and one 13.5 uh, thruster in the back. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So uh, uh, what I'm what I'm seeing out of you this year is uh, a little bit closer to. I'm not going to you know name drop Robbie, but you've cut. You're emulating his bottom turn. You're the full sheeted in kind of the Nash. But then obviously <laughs> when the cutback comes in, right. there's this level of agility I, I'm seeing in your boards that. Uh, how do I put this? <laughs> I mean, it's you've got a, you've got the ability to do a lot of different moves Bent, but what what's impressing me is that you actually appear to be quite spontaneous i can't quite predict what you're about to do you're less predictable this year thank what you it, what it, it thank you is it's a lot of flow i think you're not you don't seem ashamed to just throw a big cutback instead of you know always going for the talker yeah the yeah well uh i guess i feel as though i have more freedom now that uh, the range of equipment that I'm riding has started to expand, so I don't feel pigeonholed into doing one thing necessarily. Right. And for that reason, yeah, it's like you can get a board where you're like, okay, this is a turns board. You know, this is a board that I want to like, I want to get in the pocket. And like, if I'm going to go for a big maneuver, it's going to be the perfect section. I'm not going to feel like I have to force it on every wave. Uh, exactly. I, my quad is a little bit more small wave oriented where, yeah, like you're going to see me probably try to go for a maneuver on every wave that that i find when it gets smaller um okay so the size yeah. was playing into it too obviously there are some mm. and you never know what's behind you so if you don't necessarily make it then you might really be paying yeah yeah exactly i i, I think that in all surfing sports when you start going to the air in big conditions you have to make sure that you have the projection and the length of of, of air um, in order to make it around that big section. You know, you can't just throw anything and flick it because you'll probably end up being behind the wave. At least that's what I've kind of learned over the past year. And Yeah, I feel good. <laughs> Let's check out Morgan Noirot here. He's in a two-man heat with Jazz Glickenhaus. Yeah. Now, Noirot's kind of got the whole lineup to himself, but that was just a mm. big snap off the top. I was really looking forward to watching his heat. Uh, oh, here's your chance. 
Yeah. He's sailing super well. Oh! Wow. And of course, as soon as I say that... As soon as you say that, he'll keep it and said, oh, really? I'm, I'm, what really happened there was he hit the channel, <laughs> and that was a ghost bump. Oh, he broke his mask. Oh, man. I should just not say anything oh, ever again. Baron, that wow. was your fault. I, I, I'm his friend, you know? And, and I just did him real dirty on that one. Meanwhile, Yo, Jazz Glickenhaus <laughs> nothing to lose and the entire lineup to so don't even tell oh me my this goodness isn't worth the cost of your entry fee look at Morgan this just wave took himself out jazz has Okipa to himself and he's got the flow line whoa i'm and he did it again. i'm going to stop talking <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness okay, Baron, stay oh. Let's see here you're Whew. Right. Whew. Work. yikes Vegas odds e <laughs> Rodinger is not the guy you want calling your bet. Yeah, no. However, I have you, no future following you, Kai, hey, in, listen, in the realm of the, the, I probably windsurf might have commentating. Said, said the same thing. It doesn't matter if he makes it or not, but you're setting the table for these guys' failures here, and, and it's a very interesting process. Now, I want to go back to Morgan's wave. He had this, like, you know, super good cutback. Mm. Do you think he just relaxed a little bit too much when he set his inside edge? Because Hokipa laughed at him. It was almost like he heard exactly what I said in his mind he and then just got absolutely wrecked. Wrecked. Jazz, Jazz, you know, is taking a felching here, and he's at least in one piece. Morgan can't <laughs> believe it. I'm going to have to just, when Morgan comes in, just give him the most heartfelt apology. Be like, hey, look, I'm sorry I started talking about you <laughs> because everything went wrong after that oh quite honestly uh it it you want to be able to like as you said oh barrel at lanes wow as you said about the pressure i mean this is a two-man heat so not only with the with the fact that no one's eliminated but there's only two guys out mm. possibly just too loose just too loose-minded about it and and <laughs> look what happens when you for one Flipping <laughs> second, yeah. take your mind off what you're doing. Well, uh, I guess in my heat, I sort of had the exact same thing happen to me. I sort of loosened up after having two waves that I felt like were good scores. And then the third one, I was sort of like, oh, yeah, I'll just go on this section like and do a stock air, no problem. And then... Oh, that slap down on the stock air was brutal. Yeah, that's when everything went horribly you wrong. You took your mind off it, and you looked like... But maybe you took it for granted or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But to me, it just looked like the angle mm. okay, was wrong. Now, Every, talk to, yeah. take me through your 360, because that was really unique in the sense that it looked 100% like you were going out the back. Yeah, it you was... Know, like, you were going out the back, <laughs> and you were like, oh, he didn't make it, and then you were in. Was he, that the back tickler there, or were you actually riding the lip on your back there? Or what part of the board made contact with the lip? That was a bit of a weird one, because I had my eyes closed the whole entire <laughs> time. I was like, as soon as, like you said, like it looked like I was going out the back and I sort of felt that too and I was just like well that's that's that I guess and then all of a sudden I hit the the face of the wave so I opened my eyes again and I was like wow this is actually going to work out perfect for me so I mean, are you are you kind of uh, where are you at with your boom height uh let's see probably like Higher maybe low. like a hand span above my head oh you are a high boom rider yeah 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 okay, yeah and talk to me about what that does for you um well I suppose really uh, I feel as though I can hang off the boom and, and sort of lower my center of gravity. It's kind of interesting because I think um, I've, I've seen the philosophy go the other way where it's like my boom is low, so my center of gravity is low. But the leverage is different. But the leverage is different, and I think it's just a personal preference thing. But for me, I feel as though I get a little bit of baboon action yes. hanging off of the limb, arr, arr, arr. No <laughs> so doubt. to speak. No, no, that's, that's yeah. it. Uh, uh, I think you, you just exactly explained it. Yeah. Part of windsurfing and part of the reason we went to longer harness lines mm. was because you're able to get the rig more upright. Yeah. And this might not be the symptom of a high boom or whatnot, but the point that you can hang from your boom, yeah. I've seen you make recoveries that n were unreasonable to expect. And part of it had to be that you were able to not hang out completely. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I got some weird stuff going on. I'm not going to lie. You know, I, I show up to the beach... And I know that my harness is probably too loose for uh, my body size. And the way that I rig my sails, also I have like a ton of downhaul. And it's, it's almost like a little bit of a, of a personal disorder that I have where it, it continues to be more and more and more downhaul. And uh, I'm addicted to it, to downhaul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I've got some weird stuff going on. But it, it, 
mean, seems to balance itself out and work out okay for me. So. Does that equate to liking to ride powered, and then that's also why you like a high boom, because that enables the leverage to kick in? Yeah, You've, yeah. You know, now, correct me if I'm wrong, finished growing mm -hmm. for the most part. I believe so, okay. yes. Uh, I'm just going to continue to get wider at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Start blowing up. But, I mean, honestly, I remember you sailing here when you were 10. And uh, this mm. is when, uh, you know, the boxer was a very prevalent sail. Here's Jazz Blue. Here we go. Who has basically ridden the first wave since Morgan went down. This has been the only way that really came <laughs> in. And Jazz just, well, I don't know if that was Jazz or Acid Jazz or what. Man, and but let was, the record show that I said absolutely yes, nothing during that, that wave. <laughs> and we're in a situation right now where the wind has kicked in, but it's not only kicked in, it's also flipped a little bit more offshore. Mm. And the apparent wind thing... It's wreaking havoc, and the and the problem is, is that the heat mentality, is overtaking these riders. Like, okay, I gotta have be powdered enough to make it out, and I gotta be powdered enough to you know to, to stay mobile. Well, guess what happens when you get on a wave? You're overpowered. Yeah. Hard to deal with. I, I mean, it, it it is a tricky thing. You know, I was just talking to uh, Brazino, and um, he wasn't necessarily bummed about his heat, but he was regretting a couple of mistakes that he felt that he made, which, I mean, I, I think that he sailed a great heat. He had that one wave where he was in the pocket for four or five turns, and yeah. it was really impressive to watch. But he went first, and sometimes I w that's what happens when you go first. You know, you, you find that you're on the wrong size equipment or that, that your strategy that was wasn't everything. necessarily right. Yeah. And he sailed a great heat within his limits. I think that yeah. what, what I say about Brasinho is he was... He wasn't in a battle, first of all. Mm. He, he wasn't in this, like, super stacked heat for one thing, but also that maybe there's something to be said for not completely emptying your cup in round one <laughs> and completely just going on all-out abandon mode. Well, what do you mean by that, Kai? Well, I, I guess I'm just saying that there's a lot of heats to go if you're a contender like Brazino or yourself, and that with the judges' scale, if you show them everything you've got in round one, you might not get as rewarded later on. When oh, right, and I already did like two of the three moves that I know how to do. You know so. what, though? You've got a better one in you. So you might have done the move, <laughs> but you didn't do it as well as you can. <laughs> right. In your case, we have it. We have it. The bent scale for that. Okay, and you certainly haven't emptied your cut in that in that sense. But what I'm really just you know to Thank go you. back to the overall scheme of things. Yeah. Is that you're you're emphasizing pure wave riding and the power game in your wave riding, and I really like to see that because you know not to call you a one trick pony or to see somebody who's only doing the same thing again and again. I've seen Brazino do that in heats. Yeah. Where it's, you know, just a repetition talk of thing where you're just like, well, how do we score this anymore when he's doing the same thing? <laughs> but, you know, the reality is that I think the judges, I will secretly tell you, are really emphasizing the wave riding game this year. Yeah. And if you've known that and you're taking note, then you're right where you need to be with this. So mm. Well, keep it up. And tis the season of change, I suppose. Tis the season of change. <laughs> how does it feel with your hair? Uh... Very different. Very, very odd. <laughs> when uh, my first session on the water was definitely like, what, what is happening? Wow. Where, where is my main thing? Where's the main? But I like it. But it's you're nice. still the samurai, like I said. And you know, this is just the beginning. And and again, you know, to bring this up, you and Morgan have three Hokita titles each, and you're chasing the great KA one 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 Polakal for four. And and really, at at the point of going, you know, for four. You guys are in earlier. In, you're early in your careers. Yes. This this can happen. This is the narrative. Yes, it is. It definitely is. Here's Morgan Waro on a beautiful wave, and I want you to take this one back. I'm shutting up. I do not want him no, to no, fall, take it, take man. It. You're gonna call it. Oh, I'm so nervous that like I'm gonna do something again. Oh no, my predict. goodness. Just How was it. that turn? It was a beautiful turn. Goodness, and he's in a perfect position. Right on that shoulder, and this is kind of the lane right here. This last section. Morgan's just chilling. That was nice. That was perfect. He did exactly what he needed to do with one last turn. Morgan deserves applause for just surviving that ride. He put he? a period in it. Yeah. It was like a nice sentence, and he put a period in it. it and, like you were, and you were conservative in your predictive play calling. I really You're didn't want to set him up. from any calling predictions. Here's Jazz Glickenhouse. Gastra and Taboo combo, I believe. Oof, that looks powerful. Feel in the wind. Man. Most definitely you know, feeling the way. on a pretty fairly big rig. Nice little carby turn, that though. That was really nice, yeah. Jazz is just 
splitting hairs here on the point. This is, I mean, I just, I pause to reflect, like, what if I was, like, somewhere, like, you know, uh, Austria, and I'm watching mm -hmm. this event right now. You would want to be here. There is no two ways about it. And we are here, and we are very blessed to be here. And this competition, long-standing as it is, it's an honor to be a part of, isn't it? It is. It really is. I mean, it, for me, it's been a sh very special event for pretty much my whole life. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I really guess that we owe a lot to Sam for continuing to put this event on, you know, because it is important to all of us. I mean, we all look forward to it and, and, and we all enjoy being here. So and yeah, if you are watching in Austria right now, you're a legend because it's one thirty in the morning and you're exactly. still up. Stick so with us over thank there. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hopefully, Paul <Bob's> Mueller is watching. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Shout outs to all the crazy Swiss riders, but Boz, you've been really impressive. A lot of good, a lot of good riders. I'd like to see come here. You know, given the uh, ability to, he'd be one of them. And I'll, I'll, I'll shout out all my friends in Finland and Scandinavia, the Surfers Wire Bear crew. And high level of riding going out there, and I think everybody really appreciates what Hukipa offers. It's this time of year right now where the we're, we're right where you would want to be. No question about it. No, no, no matter the amount of punishment that's served here, <laughs> you know, and, and believe me, in a way, it gets even worse than this. I mean, uh, <laughs> between oh, yeah. me and you, we've taken some waves on the head.